Hi, this is Ben Finio with Science Buddies, and this video will show you how to use a multimeter. Multimeters come in all shapes and sizes. While professional multimeters can cost hundreds of dollars, if you're a student doing a science project or a hobbyist just tinkering with electronics, a cheaper multimeter somewhere in the $20 to $30 range is probably all you need. Most multimeters have similar features, including a screen that displays the readings, a knob that selects the measurement, and ports where you plug in the probes to take the measurement. In this video, we'll be using this DT830L digital multimeter, which is included in many of our Science Buddies kits. We'll go over how to measure voltage, current, resistance, and do a continuity check, some of the most common features you'll use on a multimeter. Other multimeters might have more advanced features like the ability to measure capacitance, but we won't be going over those in this video. Most multimeters come with a pair of red and black probes with a plug on one end to go into the multimeter and a pointy probe tip on the other end that you can use to probe circuits. It's convenient to have some alligator clip cables handy as those can allow you to clip onto the circuit to take measurements so your hands can be free to do other things. There are different types of probe accessories available, for example, these probes have a banana plug on one end to go into the multimeter and an alligator clip directly on the other end instead of a probe tip so you don't need a separate alligator clip cable. Let's start by looking at our multimeter in a little more detail. There are a lot of symbols on the front that might be kind of overwhelming and confusing at first, but don't worry, we'll go over them one by one as we use them. The main symbols you'll be seeing in this video are V for volts, A for amperes, which is the unit of current, and the capital Greek letter omega, which stands for ohms, or the unit of resistance. This multimeter has a separate on-off switch that you use to turn the multimeter on and off. More expensive multimeters usually have an auto power off feature that will turn it off automatically after a certain period of inactivity, but this one doesn't, so make sure you remember to turn it off when you're not using it in order to conserve the battery. Now let's look at the ports where we can plug the probes into the multimeter. You'll see that we have three different pro ports labeled COM, V Omega MA, and 10A. COM stands for common, that's where the black probe is going to be plugged in, and we'll usually connect that to the ground or negative side of our circuit. V omega MA stands for volts, ohms, or milliamps. We plug the red probe into this port for most of the measurements we're going to be taking to measure voltage, resistance, or small amounts of current. And then finally, this third one we're not going to use as often, that's for measuring large amounts of current up to about 10 amps. So for now, we're going to plug the red probe into this V omega MA port. Now let's start with the relatively simple case of measuring the voltage of a battery. I'm going to set the dial on my multimeter up here somewhere in the V range. I'm not going to worry about the exact number yet. I turn the multimeter on, and again, I have the black probe plugged into the COM port and the red probe plugged into the V omega milliamp port. I have two batteries here, a AA and a 9 volt, and I'm going to start out with the AA. I'm going to take oops, the black probe and touch it to the negative side of the battery and the red probe and touch it to the positive side of the battery. And you can see I'm getting a reading of 001 on the screen. And that's not a very accurate reading. I'm not getting any decimal places. And you'll see that I have my knob set all the way up here to 1000 volts, which if you know anything about batteries is much, much higher than we expect to get from a AA battery. We would expect this to be about 1.5 volts. So fancier multimeters will have an auto ranging feature where they will automatically select the measurement range for you. This multimeter isn't going to do that for you. You need to manually select the range that is the best for what you want to measure. So what I'm going to go do, do is go down a step to 200 volts and try again. And now I'm getting 1.5 volts, which is about what I expect, but 200 volts is still a lot bigger than what I need to measure. So I'm going to keep stepping down to the 20 volt range, and notice that when I do that, I get an extra decimal place. The decimal point moved over one. So now if I measure, I get 1.6 volts, 1.60. So my reading is getting more accurate, so I got an extra decimal place. This voltage is actually small enough that I can keep going down. Now notice that the label here changed. Now I'm in the 2000 M range, which stands for 2000 millivolts. So now my reading is in millivolts instead of volts. It's important to pay attention to the labels on the dial because they'll tell you the units of your measurement. Now here, I don't have a decimal place anymore. I'm getting 1,608 millivolts. So as I keep going down, my reading keeps getting more and more accurate. If I go down too far, though, my range won't be high enough to measure the voltage. So I've gone all the way down to the 200 millivolt range. 
and now I'm getting a 1 with no other numbers, which is how this multimeter tells me that the reading is outside the current range I have selected. So if I go down too far, I'll get that 1 on the screen, I go back up to the next highest value, and that's going to give me my most accurate reading for this voltage. So in this case, I get 1,607 millivolts, or 1.607 volts. I can do the same thing for the 9-volt battery here, where you might be able to guess if I have this set to 2,000 millivolts, that's 2 volts. That range is not high enough, so I get a 1. If I want to measure that 9-volt battery, I'm going to need to go up the next step to 20 volts. And here you can see that this battery has actually, actually been drained a little bit. I'm only getting about 7.98 volts instead of the 9 volts I would expect. Finally, if I reverse my probe, so if I put the red probe on the negative terminal and the black probe on the positive terminal, I will just get a negative number. So that doesn't damage anything, it doesn't hurt anything, that just tells you that you have your probes backwards because you would expect a positive voltage when measuring the battery. Now, measuring the voltage of a battery is pretty simple. What if we want to measure the voltage of something in a circuit? So here I have an example circuit consisting of a battery pack, a resistor, and an LED. Very simple demonstration circuit. And what if I say I want to measure the voltage in this circuit? Now, note that voltage is measured between two points, so it doesn't make sense to just ask what is the voltage in this circuit. We have to ask which component we are measuring the voltage of. In this case, if we look at the circuit diagram, we can see we have three components in series. We have the battery, the resistor, and the LED, and we can measure the voltage across any one of those components individually. To measure voltage in a circuit, you connect the multimeter in parallel. So in this case, there are three different ways we could connect the multimeter in parallel to something in this circuit. We could connect it in parallel to the battery, in parallel to the resistor, or in parallel to the LED. When taking measurements on a breadboard, this is where alligator clips and jumper wires can come in handy because you can just put the jumper wires into the breadboard and then your hands will be free to do other things. If you don't understand how a breadboard works or you've never used one before, we highly recommend you check out, check out our breadboard tutorial video, which will tell you everything you need to know about breadboards. But for now, we're going to assume you know how they work. So first, I'm going to connect my two wires in parallel to the battery, putting them into the power buses here. You'll see I get a reading of 2.83 volts. I can also connect them in parallel to the LED. I get a smaller reading of 2.2, roughly about 2.3 volts. And finally, I can connect them in parallel to the resistor. And I get a reading of about 0.65 volts. So as I would expect with these components in series, the voltage across the LED plus the voltage across the resistor should equal the voltage across the battery pack. Now, what if I want to measure the current through this circuit? This gets a little more complicated. To measure the current through a part of a circuit, you need to put the multimeter in series with that part of the circuit. And, well, to measure voltage, I didn't actually need to rearrange anything on the breadboard to do that because I was just putting the multimeter probes in parallel with the different circuit components. To put the multimeter in series, I'm actually going to need to rearrange things on the breadboard a bit. So if I look at the circuit diagram, I only have one loop in my circuit here, so the current I measure is going to be the same regardless of where I put the multimeter. I could put it in between the battery and the resistor, in between the resistor and the LED, or in between the LED and the battery. The current will be the same in any case. But when I go do that on the breadboard here, I'm going to need to move one of the parts. So for example, I'm going to move the resistor lead over one hole here, and then get ready to put my multimeter probes in series with the resistor and the LED. But before I do that, I want to be careful. Let's go back and look at the ports for the probes on our multimeter again and the settings for current. Remember we have this extra port for 10 amps. And if you don't know how much current you're going to measure, it's always safer to start with that 10 amp setting because that will allow you to measure a much higher current without damaging your multimeter's fuse. So if you know about LEDs, you might know, oh, that's probably only a couple tens of milliamps, you should probably be safe. But especially if you're working with motors or something where you just in general don't know the current, it's safer to start with that higher measurement because as you can see, if you look at the small print by this other port here, that one is limited to 500 milliamps max. So if we exceed 500 milliamps on this port, we're going to blow the fuse. So we can go all the way up to 10 amps on this one Safer to start there, and we're going to turn our dial over to the 10 amp setting on the knob. 
So now I should be able to put my multimeter in series. You notice that the LED has gone out because I broke the circuit by moving that resistor. I put the multimeter in series here, the LED goes back on, but I'm getting a pretty inaccurate reading again. 0.01, I don't know what the decimal points are beyond that, so I should be safe now to move down to the port with the lower current range that's going to be more accurate. So I'm going to switch back down to here, lower myself to the 200 milliamp setting, and you can see now I'm getting a more accurate reading of 13.7, 13.8 milliamps. And just like I did with the voltage, I can keep stepping down to get more and more accurate readings until my range goes too low. So I can step down to 20 milliamps, now I'm getting an extra decimal place, about 12.21, all the way down to 2,000 milliamps, and now I've gone too low. Okay, so if I go back up to about 20 milliamps, that's going to be the most accurate reading I can get for this circuit with two decimal places. Now, when you are done measuring current, it is always a good idea to set your multimeter dial back to measuring voltage. And that's because it is much easier to accidentally blow the fuse when you have the multimeter set to measure current. For example, if you wanted to measure the voltage of a battery like we did earlier, and you connected the probes directly to the battery with no resistance in series to limit the current, while you have it set to measure current, you will easily blow the fuse because you're gonna get a lot more than 500 milliamps directly out of the battery. So again, when you're done measuring current, set it back to voltage just to be safe the next time you pick up the multimeter. Okay, next let's talk about measuring resistance. So this is something that's convenient if you just hate reading those color codes on the tiny little resistors, or if you need to measure the actual value of your resistor instead of just the rated value, because there's usually a pretty big error range, like five or 10% on the actual value of the resistor. So to do that, you're going to want to remove the resistor from the circuit. Don't try to measure resistance while the resistor is connected to a power supply in an active circuit, or you won't get an ac accurate reading. And again, here's where alligator clips come in handy to just clip onto the leads of that resistor. And just like we did with voltage and current, you can make an educated guess as to where you should start on this dial. So for ohms, we can go all the way up to 2000 kilo ohms, which is equivalent to two mega ohms, or all the way down to 200 ohms. In this case, I started at the lower end of the range and I have what should be a 47 ohm resistor here, so I'm getting pretty close to that, about 46.8, 46.9 ohms. And you can see as I go up, I start to lose accuracy because I'm losing that decimal place. So measuring a resistor this small, I wanna be all the way down there in that 200 ohm range. I have a bigger resistor here. This one is supposed to be about 10 kilo ohms. So if I connect that, You can see I'm getting the one because I'm outside the range. I've exceeded 200 ohms. And as I start going up, eventually I should get in the proper range for this resistor. So you can see again, there's that error percentage. This is actually about 10.3 ohms, not exactly, sorry, 10.3 kilo ohms, not exactly 10 kilo ohms. So it can be important depending on what you're doing to measure the actual value of your resistors. Now, with cheaper multimeters, you're not going to get very accurate readings for very small resistances. So if you're trying to measure something just like a wire, this is usually probably down around one ohm or even less than that. Don't trust those readings too much. You can see I can't connect to this wire and go down to my smallest range and I get something like 1.0 ohms, but really below an ohm, your reading is not going to be very accurate with a cheap multimeter, so make sure use this to measure actual resistors, but not just pieces of conductive metal or wires. The final feature we're going to go over is the continuity check. So that's this little symbol here with kind of those little curvy lines and the arrow symbol, which represents a diode, if you know what a diode is. And this one is a really convenient feature that just beeps if two things are electrically connected. So if I touch my probes together directly, it beeps at me because there's a complete conductive path for the circuit or the current to flow through the circuit there. This is a really convenient feature to check if two things are connected like they're supposed to be in your circuit or for example, to check if a cable is good. So for example, let's take my circuit here, put my resistor back in and say, I don't know if maybe I have something wired improperly. I wanna make sure that there's a conductive path 
between this leg of my LED and this wire on the battery. So that's telling me that there is a path between this part of the LED and there. So say I had this wired improperly, say I had the resistor in the wrong hole and my LED is not lighting up, then I can test both sides of my LED. I can test here and say, okay, I, I know I have conductivity on this side. Those are connected because I'm getting a beat, but if I test on this side, there should be a connection between the LED and the resistor. But I'm not getting a beep there. Then if I look more closely, I could realize, oh, I have that wired improperly. I don't have conductivity between this leg of the LED and this leg of the resistor. Similarly, say you have an experiment with a bunch of wires or cables, and you're not sure if maybe you kinked a cable or broke something, or if you have a cable that's going bad. If I take this alligator clip and touch the probes to both ends of the alligator clip, I'll get a beep letting me know that my cable is good. If I didn't get a beep, then I'd know that this cable is probably bad. So again, a convenient feature that you can use to test for conductivity in circuits or test if a material is conductive. For example, if I touch these two probes to a piece of metal, say like the outside surface of this battery, I know that's conductive, but if I touch it to the paper on my work surface here, that's not conductive because paper does not conduct electricity. So also a convenient check to test if a material is conductive or not. Again, there are some more advanced features on this and other multimeters that we didn't go over in this video. You might have noticed this NPN and PNP thing down here that's for measuring transistors. There's a V with a squiggly line next to it for measuring alternating current instead of direct current. You can measure the voltage from a wall outlet. We don't recommend doing that if you're new to electronics because wall outlets are actually dangerous and you can hurt yourself if you don't know what you're doing, whereas the electricity from batteries and little battery powered circuits like this is generally pretty harmless. So this is much safer if you're starting out. We're not going to go over those in this video, but if you have any more questions about anything you saw in the video in more detail, we recommend you check out our written tutorial. There was a link to that at the end of the video and have fun using your multimeter in your project.